we're starting off we're live ladies and gentlemen i'm here with leah she is a physician's assistant so a medical professional mm-hmm. um we had this like deep conversation while having dinner and uh we're just you know trying to understand this whole world and universe or should we understand it that's what we came to should we should yeah. we not um how to incorporate modern medicine with spirituality and uh, just how to better ourselves and should we do it one way or another or should we do it both ways what are your thoughts um i think we should do it both that's where that's my sweet spot that's where my passion is okay yeah why um i already know why but i mean just so yes, you know people so can listen yeah, to it we'll recap we'll recap um I think you have to have all of it. I think um, the miracle of Western medicine, um, the advancements, the um, effectiveness, and the um, understanding and research of it is is beautiful and really effective. Um, But it's not the whole picture, and it's not something that um, can answer all the questions and all the whys that come into what it means to be healthy and what it means to um, thrive or to um, manage or um, cure disease. Um, And so I think you have to, you have to have um, the whole component of the spiritual body, the mental body, and the physical body. And Western medicine is great in answering a big portion of the physical body aspect, um, but you have to have the spiritual health and the spiritual management of of life and, and understand and honor and respect what that has, what these spiritual and emotional effects have on, on our body. What effects do they have? Um, so, I mean, we know in the sense of... Um, Certain emotions or certain um, feelings have, they have vibrational um, quality. And with that, um, you have each one of those. So any, there, there's an energy that's released when you, when you feel a certain way. Like you, angry? Yeah. Stressed out? Yeah. Like those like, are the bad ones though. Yeah. Like shame and fear is a very low vibrational emotion. Um, and it, and it resonates at a low level um happiness and gratitude or love and gratitude um i i believe is was one of the higher vibrational emotions and so um if if someone's overstressed if someone is um not feeling happy or connected with others they actually each each one of those thoughts and emotions have a direct effect on our on our body and um and so looking at when when I have a patient looking at them and saying okay what's going on with your body and what's happening there and how is that manifesting I don't stop there I ask the why I ask where's the emotion where's the spirit where and in spirituality that that's such a broad term right like bit time it could be in in any way the way I view spirituality is how are you connected to others and how are you connected to yourself in the bigger picture so um for me, it, it doesn't have to be a religion. It doesn't have to. It can be. Um, but I think all of those are just a tool for us to our spiritual connection is how are we connected to who we are and how are we connected to others? And that um, that is what feeds our soul a lot. And and so it's looking at how people feel that way, if they have a deficit in that or if they feel like they're not connected to who they are um, or to themselves. Um, that that can definitely manifest in the body. By the way, she has an undergrad in philosophy, (laughs) (laughs) right? That was pretty deep. (laughs) That was actually pretty deep. Um, I was expecting a very generic answer. (laughs) Sorry. No, 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 no. That's actually good. You're not going to get generic. Yeah, that's good. Um, Well, the the reason um, I just want to understand is uh, because I've heard different people just meditate and, like I told you before, um, and just overcome cancer in weeks. And then other people have tried and tried and and not been so successful, unfortunately. Yeah. And – but, but there's different patterns that I see in people that have tried randomly. Actually, it's pretty random. I feel like they really, really deep down inside wanted to, and they're able to. But other people, I'm sure they wanted to, and they couldn't. Um, yeah. But what is it about some of these people that could have? What is it about some of these people that couldn't have? Um, that's actually mm-hmm. kind of like bothering me. Um, and I know that there's a formula there. Um, I just haven't figured it out yet. 
But I when I do, I don't I'll, think we have yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we definitely have. I mean, Dr. Joe Dispenza says uh, pretty much um, he kind of reverse engineered the placebo effect, mm. um, but it's not as easy as just you know just taking a pill. So it's like requires like deep deep meditation, and there's all these like uh, traumas and stuff in your subconscious that probably would stop you from it. Um, mm. So it's really not easy. Um, I mean, everyone can do it, I believe, but it's really not for everyone. Um, yeah. But that's why I like uh, th- I like what you're saying about incorporating Western medicine. Don't just go off of the deep end and say I'm just gonna meditate and it's all gonna go away. And I mean, you can I've seen it happen, yeah, but sure. I don't I don't think it's a one size fits all for everyone. Yeah, I don't think it is either. And I think it's more complex than what we like to. I think sometimes, again, I think even with you know Joe Dispenza, he's amazing, right? And and he has beautiful things that have come about um, with what he teaches and 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 his experience, but. I would, I would be brave right now and say, um, as much as th- it, it's a similar kind of s- same coin, opposite side. I think if we put blinders on, so whether we say, oh, everyone, it can work for everybody, or you know, of course you can, but what's wrong with you? Um, why, why isn't it working for you? Um, I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that philosophy. And so the same thing with Western medicine. If, if you have uh, an expert saying nope, this is the only way to do it, and if it's not working, what's wrong with you? Um, or, you know, there's this is, this is the whole truth. I just don't know if I believe in that. I don't know if I believe that um, either side knows all the complexity of it. I think there's amazing experts there, and there's amazing um, evidence of both. And, and so for meditation only to cure cancer, sure it might, but I don't. I don't like to subscribe to this idea that if it didn't work, there's something wrong with the person. Um, I think it's just more complex. I Big think time. certain genes. I think there's certain, you know, cancer genes and whatnot that might just be bigger than meditation. Nice. Um, but that doesn't mean that meditation is ineffective, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. But I just think that there's more to the story than what we understand right now. Yeah, definitely. On both sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I just thought. Of I just thought of a quote um, that says, science doesn't need the mystical, and the mystical doesn't need science, but humanity needs both. Hmm. So, like, yeah. kind of, like, incorporate it all. Yes. Um, yeah. And have you seen patients that have, like, tried um, multiple things be more successful than just one person? Just like, oh, I'm just going to stick to this, and that's it. Oh, absolutely. Like, and, and I think that's why I resonate with that. That's why, for me, it is, I, I am, I 100% believe in Eastern alternative medicine. I 100% believe in Western medicine. Um, and I know if we can marry the two and not create this binary system of one or the other, um, that's where we get the best success. Like I know with patients that are dealing with chronic disease, um, I can tell pretty right away which ones are going to be okay and which ones aren't, which ones are going to do better. And a lot of that has to do, they could be on the same drugs, they could be doing the same lifestyle. Um, but if I'm not trying to help them move forward in that, but if their mindset, if they're depressed, if they're anxious, if they aren't connected, um, if they don't have human connection and emotional connection or spiritual connection, um, they're going to struggle a lot harder and a lot more than those that have that and those that are open to addressing those things. And I think that's where I have patterned my practice is, um, looking at everybody and saying, hey, let's just look at all the ways. Let's look at all the things and let's try and understand it in in this way. Let's understand the connection between the spiritual, mental, and body. Can, can you give me an example of like someone that would come in and you'd be like, oh, this person's going to have a tough time versus someone comes in like, oh, this person's going to make it and they have the same condition? Yeah. Can you tell me like some of the traits that differ? Um, so. Personality traits. Yeah, yeah. So um, one is someone that is um, not depressed or anxious or doesn't have a lot of trauma. Um, Most likely are, I have seen, do much better, improve much better. And and like, let's, again, like, let's say there's not much that has changed in the sense of if I'm treating them both and they're doing the same behavior. So we'll talk about diabetes, for for example, okay? So. um, Type 2. Yeah, type two. So is that that's the one you get later in life, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, more like kind of lifestyle modification mm. um, that has led to that. So, if someone is dealing with other things, um, 
But I do, I, I guess I need to pause for a moment because most of the time, rarely do I see someone that has type 2 diabetes that doesn't have other things going on in the sense of what led that certain lifestyle to create that, that uh, pathology. You mean like sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Let the I mean, I just diabetes. mean like, you know, kind of eating lifestyle. Um, maybe they're not eating the best. Uh, maybe they are they kind of have a sedentary lifestyle, um, stressed, you know, not getting much sleep. Like, I, 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 haven't f I haven't found many that have type 2 diabetes that don't have that in common. So there's other factors that led to diabetes. So in my mind, I mean, diabetes is kind of an easy one in, in the sense of I know that um, there's certain lifestyle traits that has led to that. Um, along, of course, you get the genetic component. You get people that are more prone to it or not. Um, but generally speaking, someone that develops diabetes has a, a pattern of life that has led to that. So... Um, so I have to kind of put that caveat in there. So because most people are, are dealing with something there. And, and if we're but with that being said, maybe they're sedentary and maybe they're not eating the best. But if someone has really good family connection, has um, is not dealing with de depression and anxiety, their body is actually going to respond a little bit like they're we're going to get their diabetes under control much sooner than I would someone that has a depression and anxiety that is kind of struggling emotionally and mentally in life um, and not to say that that's that's bad or anything but it's just knowing that that is actually a pretty um, common component to it um, and and a lot of that too then it's like you know if you're not emotionally and mentally feeling well um, usually spirituality is also kind of being in a deficit and, and, and spirituality could be you believe in God too right like just believe in God that's what you mean like just being religious or just spirituality, like separate, just like spirituality, just okay. believing in something higher than yourself. Yeah, like believing in in a connection to something greater than yourself, and um, or just people, and believing in that, and and believing that you're that who you are is more than who we are, like who, what our body is and what our mind tells us. So. That's kind of what I mean, spirituality. I, I, I really do use that a little bit more broad than most people do. Like Good, as you should. Yeah, I, think that's most, I, I think spirituality is not really about God or, or a divinity. I think it's just more about a larger connection. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. um, you feel more and more people are, like, opening up to uh, spirituality? spirituality? Um, like, uh, not as far as, like, clients, like, maybe in your personal life or friends um, as you grow up more, do you feel like more and more people are like opening up to like uh, I don't want to a more broad sense of spirituality? Yeah, or like to spirituality in general, because I feel like like twenty years ago, if I told people I meditate, they would think I'm weird, mm. or there's something off in me. I don't know. I mean, I think because I think spirituality can be a lot of things for different people. So I think it's kind of a a natural thing for most humans is that we we want to feel connected to something bigger than ourselves uh, whatever whatever name you put on that right um source god divine universe the you force know, mother earth you know father sky you it, know what the force is right yes okay great. are I you talking about like star wars yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> yeah sure right i mean that's something bigger that's something bigger than what we can see and in, in, in touch and all of those things but resonates deep within us and so i don't think i don't think that there's like a newer or an increase in that interest I just think it is a increase of awareness of how important it is maybe like I see you know here in Utah there's a really strong religious community that's spirituality for these people yeah big time. and that's I mean that's something that they believe in and, and hold to and so I don't I, I don't think that it's um, uncommon to believe in spirituality or, or to want that in our lives. I just think we all name it differently. But I think the awareness of, oh, that really is a bigger part than just what my beliefs are, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like it has a bigger effect in our lives than than just sort of behavior, but actually more of, it, it, I believe it can kind of directly affect our body function and our um, way that our body can thrive in this world. Yeah, just having purpose. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely been proven. 
But like yeah. people that uh, work their whole life, they're healthy, yeah. and they retire, and then they get sick and die after a couple of years because yeah. they really don't, they have, don't purpose. have purpose. Yeah, that's what Oprah said too. Yeah. On that same, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'll send that to but you. But I think it's that separation, right? I think I, again, we create this binary system that just isn't binary. Like, it, there's not they're not separate at all. Binary, I, you mean like ones and zeros? Yeah, I mean like this and that, right? Yeah, this there's and that like one, ones and zeros. Yeah. yeah, like you know, we talk about like it's either this or that. Like yeah. they're separate. There's no combination and. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that you can have one. You can't talk about one without the other. Like, they are essentially emerged. Like quantum mechanics. Absolutely. Which I have nothing, <laughs> no knowledge about <laughs> whatsoever. But I, so, yeah, which I don't know. But when you about. get down to yeah. it, you can't separate it. They, you can't the separate. interaction and how they affect each other are the same. It's you the know? one and, and the zero. Yeah, and I, I mean, I tell patients all the time, I'm like, look, if you spiritually aren't well, then you're mentally not well. And if you're mentally not well, your body is not going to thrive and vice versa. Take no matter what pattern that is, right, they are all going to be connected. And so we have to be trying to, for real health and wellness and and treatment of disease and pathologies is, to me, I feel like, I mean, it would be silly to just look at one and, and ignore the others and say, oh, those don't matter. Those don't affect affect that but they absolutely do yeah yeah i agree yeah, yeah. it's a collected mix um mm -hmm. are you familiar with like uh manifestation and things like that mm -hmm. like, can you tell us a little more about it in your perspective um i mean i think it's that same i think it's that same stream of thought um gratitude gratitude there they all have an actual quality and so like uh like a body cell has a certain quality, a certain energy, a certain vibration. That then is what triggers the chemical reactions that go on in the body. Um, so the same thing with, with an emotion. And so if we are feeling an emotion, we are actually having energy change in our s inside ourselves. And that it doesn't stop inside ourselves. It, it will go out, right? Like there's nothing stopping it from here. It's going to continue to go out into the world. And so if we are... If we are thinking and and trying to focus on and put energy towards something um to me it makes sense that of course that's going to start developing in the world outside of us because it's as as weird as it sounds it's just a chemical reaction it's just an energy exchange it's an energy it's an energe energetic exchange and connection to that and so they're going that energy doesn't stop here so it's going to just keep going and that energy has those things so I, I mean, I believe that that is, that it's a, and that's something I work on. Like I, I, um, I'm not fantastic at it, <laughs> I mean, but I definitely try and work on it. Like trying to know that it has to, if I can do that, then I actually can create that outside of me. That's crazy though. More people need to believe that though. Yeah. That they have the power to create things. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I feel like that would change. A lot of things about a lot of people. I mean, uh, I feel like health above everything else. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, said people only want one thing in this world. Just to be healthy. They want health. And then, yeah. yeah, you want the big house and then the nice car, all that other stuff. Which you can get. But uh, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Safety and health first. Yeah. And then after that, all the other stuff. All the other stuff, yeah. And so a lot of times I think what we, you know, I, and I and I often say this. It's as simple and as hard as positive thought as focusing on 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 kind of the goal instead of what we're trying to overcome if that makes sense yeah so it does. like disease state right so like we could say cancer we could say diabetes or we could say something like that or high blood pressure or whatnot um i like oftentimes i think i think where we struggle is we know that we have a certain thing that we want to change and so as we're trying to change that um, unintentionally often I think we still kind of focus on that because it's like oh it's this thing I want to overcome um, or this thing I want to change um, or or accomplish that's still kind of a deficit mindset right there's still kind of a I would say like a disease mindset instead of saying focusing on I want health and what does that health look like this is what health looks like so someone with cancer or someone with something like that it, the goal is I'm gonna fight cancer yes absolutely but we're still kind of focusing on the disease. Um, 
that's where your attention's going. And that's where the attention's going. So I think sometimes absently, um, without really knowing that that is actually putting energy into the, the into the thing that we're trying to overcome, um, more of saying, okay, let's focus on actually just whole body well function. Like, and so it has to be a little bit more broad. It has to be a little bit softer focus, I guess, sometimes, because we just need to um, kind of eliminate the deficit yeah. or, or the thing that is holding us back or the thing that we are trying to heal from. Um, I've even heard of people that just stop acknowledging the fact that they have cancer and just go on and live their life mm. with joy. And then, like, boom, just gone. Like joy, gratitude, love, right? Like yeah. you know, all those things, yeah. Yeah. And that and that would be interesting. And and I don't know. I mean, really, I don't. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, we're on just. That. In, yeah. And we're just. You know, we're just kind of talking anecdotally and 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 whatnot. But but I do believe that putting energy and focus in something is kind of key. Tony Robbins. Key to that. Where where your attention goes, energy flows. Energy flows. Yeah. But that's exactly right. Yeah. And there's there is that there's that vibration there's that energy, that transmission of energy that goes on. And then so. your your patients that you talk to like the happy go lucky ones, that let's just say are sick, they're the ones that are like the ones that make you through. Um, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, it's it's definitely. I mean, not to say that they totally eradicate the condition or the disease, but you know what? They're a hell of a lot healthier. And happier they're, probably. <laughs> they're tolerating the medicine better. The body's tolerating the medicine better. Their um, their their risk of comorbidities have will drop. Like what's comorbidities? Comorbidities is like so someone with like um like diabetes. So a comorbidity would be like hypertension and or like um things that kind of go along. So other diseases that kind of come along with that, or other contributing factors that can kind of create a larger disease um so it's you'll you'll see that those things will um will do that and so not to say that like again i'm not talking like all the time curative but i'm really saying like there really is a difference between giving someone medicine and the same medicine and someone that that i can work on the why of like where are we emotionally what is what what can we, you know, how are you feeling? What has brought you to or what has led to having this certain type of lifestyle? And we, if we can really get down to that nitty gritty um, and I give a medicine and we're working on those things and are feeling feeling positive and, and have a lot of self-love and, and connection, that medicine is going to respond. So so giving someone the medicine and adding an intention to it. Yeah. Wink, wink, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Which I feel yeah. like anything in life you should do that. Yeah. She had an intention. Like, why am I doing this? You stop and think about it, you know. Yeah. Stop being an autopilot all the time yep. in life. Because I feel like people that are an autopilot, they keep doing the same thing over and over. And then, like, they fall into this loop. Mm-hmm. Um, and then somehow they get sad or depressed, sick. Something happens to them because they're not maintaining themselves or their mental health or, like you said, yeah. spiritual health. Mm-hmm. And I don't know something happens. So, like, I like change. I welcome it. Like, uh, I was traveling. I travel all the time. And uh, I was in Egypt randomly. I mean, I just drove by myself. And, like, I met this girl that was super spiritual. And I told her I travel all the time. And she's like, what are you running away from? I'm like, nothing. She's like, then why are you traveling so much? I'm like, I just like going into the unknown. She's like, great answer. I was like, but that just came out of nowhere. Mm. But I just like that. I mean, some people are like intimidated by it. When I tell people I travel to like Guatemala or Panama. Mm. And like, like you know, like I go visit witches and stuff like that. Like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> are you out of your mind? But like, I've never had anything bad happen to me. So I always set the intention like, right, you know what? I'm just going in peace. And I'm going to come back peacefully. Mm. And like, there's something to it. I don't know. But yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's just how I like to live your life. But just, uh, just that's true. Yeah. But just adding intention to the things you do. Oh, absolutely. If I just might say, oh, I'm just gonna go travel, you know, like blah blah yeah. blah. I don't know, something might happen, but. Or is it like, am I traveling, having that self awareness, you know? But I think, I mean, I think that's a really fascinating concept, and I actually would like to sit with that a little bit more because, I think, not, I don't think obviously I talk to pe- patients about that, but. I also do think, like, you know, if you're taking medicine, let's be intentional about it. Like, don't just pop the pill and forget about it. You know, it's kind of like that. Don't just eat to eat and don't think about it. Right? Yeah, like, like stop. Set, set intent. Like, be be a little bit more present in what you're doing and, and in that. And so in the treatment, be more present in that. Um, and I don't know if it's any more magic than just putting that energy in there. 
right? And just saying, I'm going to pause for a hot minute when I'm taking my pill or when I'm doing this to be like, why am I doing this? And if you can't pause you know? for a hot minute, jump in the ice bath. <laughs> You'll definitely pause like, <laughs> woo, I'm here in a moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? But yeah. just being a little bit more present, being more present on why we're doing what we're doing, whether it was given to us, you know, whatever form that comes in or whatever action that we're doing. But, um, you know, I, I think that's kind of what I try and do and how I try and uh, approach patients is like here's the medicine this is what it's doing I'm going to tell you actually what it's doing in your body because I want them to be aware of that because it, it is a little bit of that intent it's a little bit of putting the energy being like I'm taking this because this is what it's doing you know or this is how and and I think that energy of then um, encouraging or supporting that body function that we're trying to accomplish yeah and definitely those help um, I started doing that first when I was going to the gym like I was just going mindlessly and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this push-up. It's going to help my biceps grow bigger or, you know, my chest grow bigger. And it actually does. And just gradually helps you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the energy. Yeah, but there's you have to stop. You have, you have to put some thought behind you it. Yeah, you can't just be stop. like an autopilot. <laughs> you can't be high. And, yep. you know, doing. Yep. you have to actually be in the moment. You do. Um, are you familiar with, like, the placebo effect? Yeah. Um, we use that a lot in research. Yeah. Evidence can you tell us a little yeah. more about it, like, as a medical professional? Yeah. So, I mean, when you do... Most so like all sort of medical procedures or pharmaceuticals and and things like that they you, they have to go through certain trials and research trials right so clinical trials and and what what the placebo effect is is each group is is divided and and the people don't know what group they're double in. blind yeah so they don't know and they're like okay everyone's getting this pill some people get a fake pill which is the placebo or this fake treatment or you know whatnot and the others get the real one. And there is solid, concrete evidence that there, someone that's taken the placebo, so sugar pill, um, there's a there's a usually low percentage, but still a percentage um, of people that are taking the fake pill that actually get improvement in in their disease or in their symptoms, which is huge, right? Like that's showing that how powerful that mind is in the sense that they are taking a pill thinking it's going to do a certain something and that actually ends up manifesting. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty wicked awesome, right? That is like, pretty <laughs> wicked awesome, yeah. So there's evidence behind it. There's, I mean, there is. Like, yeah. we all, there is always a placebo effect. Always. So we should I lie mean, to, almost always. I so we should lie to more people <laughs> and give them salt pills or sugar I pills. Don't know, I don't know. If <laughs> no, I'm no. Say well, that. Uh, I actually but read this. There is there is something to that. I read this study. I forgot which uh, place it is. The, it's a it's a medical office where um, people go in and they know they're going to get the placebo pill, and uh, the doctors tell them. I mean, because they're medical professionals, they're doctors. They're legit doctors. They're like, hey, this is a placebo pill, pill, and this is actually going to cure you. And apparently, there's like an 80% success rate. Oh, and the clients know it's fake. The doctors know it's fake. And there's like an 80% success rate. Whoever goes there. But you have to voluntarily go there, you know. So they don't. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's I, I, that's just kind of, I think that is confirming what we're talking about. In yeah. the sense of someone's walking in there knowing they're not taking anything, but it's all just that intent. And it's yeah. all, where are you putting your energy? They're saying, I'm buying into this idea that I'm taking something, so whether it's, I, I mean, it, it's kind of a sense of symbolically taking a pill, but they know 100% that it's all about where that energy is going. And they're going to say, okay, yeah, I'm doing this. Like, I am choosing to do this. So I'm 100% in, bought in, and that's why they do it. And I think that's, I would like to say that's why they have the success they do, Probably. if they do, you yeah. know? It was in the Washington Post, and then they started asking that. It's like, so how's the word? They're like, we have no idea. Like, they don't ask us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just that energy. I think it's nice. that energy. So exchange. putting your energy in there. Yeah. Okay. I think it's huge. I well, think it's huge. What else uh, would you be able to give people, like, as far as advice on how to just be healthy and happy? Like, um, uh, things that you've seen people do that are successful and that maybe you could share with us? Um, I feel like it's pretty common sense, but, like. I mean, you think it is. And, and I think that sometimes when we just kind of have it kind of told to us, I think we can see. Um, but I do have a lot of people kind of surprised the way that I approach things, right? Um, I was surprised for sure. But, and, and I don't know if it's just because I'm a medical professional and so they're surprised or if they just haven't heard it put the way that I have because I, um, 
because again, I, I believe in the marriage of all of it. And so, um, I believe that what works in, in, in combining all of them, but I think probably the most is, um, I think it's kind of the soft focus in the sense of not putting blinders on and not saying it's, it has to be one way, um, but that it can be a combination of all the things or half the things, um, but that we are we continue to try and be open. But I would say it, it is really trying to work on where um, – where they all meet and where we, where that, and I believe that that's the core. And I think that's kind of our power source is where our spiritual, mental, and emotional meet, like where all of three of those circles come together. And, um, and so honestly, I think the best way for health and wellness is to be checking in with ourselves and seeing where we're at on all of those fronts. So where are we spiritually in the sense that are we feeling, um, connected? Are we feeling like there is, that we have purpose? Are we feeling like, um, we are in, in tune to what's going on beyond just our, our mind and our body? Um, and then I think mentally in the sense of how's our stress management? How is, again, how's our human connection? How are we, um, how's the anxiety and depression? Like how are those thought patterns and those processes? Cause those are big. Um, in that, in that mental health, how, how are we working through trauma if we have trauma? Um, and so really doing, doing, a, a check-in with ourselves there. And then also body, what are we doing there? What are we feeding our body? How often are we moving our body? How are we sleeping? You know, what are we doing in that sense? Yeah. Sleeping is big. Huge. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. I like to get my eight hours and people are like, I can function with four, this, that, but they always have like tits. And stuff mm-hmm. they have like, like I can see their health declining. Cause yeah. I have friends that are like high achievers. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, bro. It's like just like tell those medical professionals, I sleep four hours and I'm fine. I'm like, nah, you really? I mean, nah, I don't say anything. And I'm like, nah, you really? Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. No, we need sleep. Our body needs to be able to restore. Um, it it needs that. There's it needs that restoration. There's certain few people that I've met that really don't need that much sleep, but I feel like there's something in their genes. Mm. Um, they're like genetically gifted somehow, just like a professional athlete. But those are like f- few and far between. Well, and I think for maybe for a certain period of time, um, but I I don't know. I I mean I don't know. Yeah, I mean everyone can be different. Sure, like some people need seven, other people need nine. Like <sighs> sure, why not? You know, like of course, like. But I think the biggest thing is checking in with yourself. You know, and. And are we saying, nah, I'm great, and I do all this, but are we doing that because we don't want to address the fact that we're not sleeping? Or do, you know what I mean? Like, I think we need to be really honest with ourselves on it. And and so, I mean, I was, I, I just kind of say, ultimately, I, I approach all of it that way. Yeah. You know, I, I approach health that way. I, I, I try and um, understand where my patients are in the whole of yeah. that. And it, if we can continue to address those things and work on those things, then we're gonna get some pretty, um, w- we're gonna get some progress. P- pretty good progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, but some people like are workaholics because maybe they're trying to mask depression, mm-hmm. or you know, like I don't or know, or shame, or they, shame, yeah, yeah, or something, something like that, something, or over yeah. try to compensate for something, and they lose mm-hmm. sleep, and then maybe they get what they want, and then they realize they didn't want that. Mm-hmm. So there's that whole cycle. But, but uh, it is finding that balance, you know? Yeah, 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 So it's definitely. like if, if we're doing something and it's working, okay, but let's check in with the all three. And if they're not if they're not all working together, I, I would I would probably say something at some point is going to start being um, less effective or not functioning the way that it should. So spiritually, emotionally, or physically. physically. Yeah. Okay. Do you think finances has a lot to do with it too? Like people's stress levels and stuff like that? Sure. I mean, I think, but I think it's pretty complex, right? Like yeah, it can yeah, be pretty complex easy. because what some people think is plenty, other people's don't, right? So I think it depends on what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to do and, and what we want. So, I mean, life is hard. Life is stressful. No, I don't think so. I like to say life is easy, easy going. We just make it hard. I mean, sure, ourselves. we yeah, do. Really? Yeah. Like yeah, seriously, yeah. you complicate your own life. 
I think some people do, but I think some people really struggle. Like, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I hate to, I don't want to disregard anyone's struggle. Like, I, I think, you know, some people really struggle to put enough food on the, on the table and have a home and, yeah. and have those things. Like, that's a struggle. That's hard. Like, some people don't have the money to feed their bodies healthy. Some people don't. But that's a struggle. That's, I mean, that can, those are real things that, that, you know, m- money can directly affect. Money can directly affect our health in that way. Like, it, it doesn't matter, but if it's not available, you know, there's, we call it food deserts and things in, in a lot of places here in the U.S. to where the, like, availability of fresh food is just not there. Or it's really? Too exp- yeah. Or they're probably called, too expensive. They're probably. called food deserts. Yeah. And really? they're, and a lot, they're not even there. So you have, you have places where people can't go get fresh, healthy food. It's all very processed, um, high sodium fat content. It's just not available to them. And, and that's a real thing. And so that's going to affect their health. That's going to affect, affect those things. And there's, there's nothing that they can really do in that sense of that. So it's a pretty complex thing, I think. Um, but, and I don't, I don't mean to simplify any of this. Like I, d- yeah, I don't yeah, mean to yeah. simplify um, disease states or pathologies and things going on with people. Um, I just, but I also just want to know that there's more complexity than what I think we sometimes think about. No trip. Got it. You're just checking me. I got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Well, I like to be overly <laughs> optimistic. Sure. And just, you know, just when people say life is hard, I don't like to buy into that concept. Yeah, it can be. Like, my heart, my life has been hard, too. I came from, like, the Soviet Union. We're poor, living in someone's garage. And then, like, you know, we kind of overcame that. But uh, my parents worked hard. And then they just taught me how to work hard. Now I have this place. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh, but it's great. gradually happened. Like, but I, like, I had to cut off certain things in my life to get it. Like, I would go to sleep, like, at 10 p.m., wake up at 5, and then just work hard, you know. Yeah. And, like, yeah. But I feel like a lot of those people are in those places because maybe just had bad decisions that yeah. led there. And then now they're just adding on more stress in their life. But they can always get out of it. I mean, you know, you're not a tree. Like as Jim Rowe says, you can change. I think we all have the power to change. Yes, I think we I, I think we all have the power to change. Um I for the better or the worst. Right. And and but I don't know I think with that statement I would I would actually like to maybe say sometimes that doesn't mean necessarily like I think we can all change internally. Sometimes you really can't change your outward experience in the sense of money or um, I mean, I'm just trying to think of other things, but um, and so I don't again, I, I, I don't love to I don't want to take away yeah, anyone's yeah, yeah. power to change but i definitely don't want to belittle anyone's sense of um, opportunity sometimes doesn't come to a lot of people yeah and so i i don't want to marginalize or or minimalize the fact that those are those are just situations that yeah people often aren't. can't get out of yeah, yeah. Um, no matter how much they change inside they can do all of those things and 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 manifest things that way but some things I don't. I don't know. Like I, okay. I think there's there's certain life experiences that I'm I'm not privy to. Like I I don't know them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, thank God. You know, yeah. I don't want yeah. to know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I don't I don't want to speak for anybody in that sense. Yeah, I get um, it. I get it. But I think you should just show gratitude all the time. Just the fact that you woke up today is a blessing. Oh, for sure. That's and a I great way to start right. off. Right. Yeah. 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 And trying to change that, trying to change that, like, I think everyone has 100% ability to change that. I think that is 100% in our power. Great. Cool. Yeah, that's a great way. Um, one last question. What advice would you have for people that are just, I mean, I think you probably answered it multiple times, but people that are, like, sad or depressed or just unhealthy, what do you think they could do in their life right now just to change? Or get out of that funk, or you know, as a medical professional, uh, you know, you went to school and plus you have all this knowledge. Like, what advice would you be able to give? I always end this on yeah. that note. So, okay, um, I think go kind of back to the basics. Um, trying to um, get the sleep, 
trying to look, you know, I, I tell everyone your gut is your second brain. It uses the same neurotransmitters that your brain does. Yeah, it does. Um, it has more serotonin in there, yeah, right? Yeah, your gut produces the most serotonin in your body as well. And and so if, if we don't have, if we're not feeding our gut and if we're not feeding our body, I mean, it's, it's there's a big correlation there in association with gut health and mental health. Um so working on just trying to be a little bit more, and, and I tell most people, like, hey, look, you don't got to go crazy and go vegan and, you know, like, do something really extreme if, if you don't want to. Um, it just starts off by just a little bit more intent, a little bit more of intentionally being aware or being more present in what we're putting in our body. Um, so I talk a lot about nutrition with that and, and gut health, and I know it sounds silly, but make sure you're pooping every day. And yeah. that's, you know, like people think, what? what are you talking about? I'm like, nope, you got to just make sure, make sure that gut stays healthy. Make sure we have enough fiber. Make sure we're not letting the yeah, stool sit there for that. a long period of time. Like, like poop regularly. If you're not, figure out how you can fix that. You know, yeah. put in more fiber, more water, you know, those type of things. See if we can get your gut moving. Um, that's something I struggle with, actually. That's, but that's a big thing. And I think most people do. Like, yeah. I think we kind of struggle with that I, and we don't really think about what it. What really helped me is intermediate fasting. Hmm. Just like eating once a day, like this meal that we had. That's mm-hmm. like the only thing. I think I ate yesterday, maybe like at 4 p.m. And but I mean, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I could have done yeah. until tomorrow. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, I listen to my body. It just helps a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. And I, but like also, what helps you regulate your bowels is mo- physical activity. Yeah, that's not easy that when you're sitting on it's in front not. of a computer for 10 hours no, a day. No, it's not because your gut's kind of in sleep mode, right? And so you you got to move your body, and that's the other thing I talk about a lot. So Gut health is big. Um, Cold showers. That helps you move. I have, the I have blood. yet to do that. No. But it, yeah. it just helps me because um, I have this uh, heartbeat monitor. Uh-huh. And the days that I do cold showers in the morning, my heartbeat's like probably like five to ten beats lower than the days mm. I don't. So there's something, there's a correlation there. Yeah. So yeah. I've realized that. So apparently, I'm not really aware of it too much. Um, but what's happening is I'm less stressed out during the day. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. That works. Yeah. That's so great. hey, just keep doing it. Yeah. Keep doing that. Yeah. And, and I think just moving the body. You know, whatever that looks like. And I, and I tell most people, I'm like, look, again, you don't have to go crazy. You don't Water have to go aerobics. to the gym for hours. You don't have to do anything like that. If that's, you know, if you're not there, don't do that yet. But just move your body. Get back into your body and move it. And I tell people, I'm like, whether that's dancing in your room or roller skating or yoga or whatever, like, it doesn't matter. What? Just start by moving yeah. your body. Because most people... And I'm again, I'm not going to say everybody because there's a lot of people that are doing these things and are still dealing with depression, anxiety. But most people are not moving our body enough. That and we've got to move our body. That just reminds me of because I go swim all the time. I do a lot of laps and I do for like hours straight, like pretty intense. Mm-hmm. And there's these ladies next to me that do water aerobics mm-hmm. and like always giving me high fives. I'm giving them high fives. We're like cheering each yeah. other on, but just do your level best. They're yeah. like in their 60s, 70s. Yeah. And you know, like I wouldn't think they do like flip turns and stuff, but mm-hmm. you know. They're doing, like, the little water That's aerobics amazing. to music. Yeah, but it's, yeah. like, I mean, like, That's we're all, like, cheering each other on, you know? Like, oh, we're yeah. in the water, we're in this together. Yeah, but I tell people, do something that you enjoy, you yeah. know? Like, because a lot of people are like, what do you mean? They're like, I hate going to the gym, I hate doing this, or I have this. I'm like, That's okay. Just find something. Find something. Again, I'm like, go dance. Put music on and, and dance, you know, whatever that's going to look like. Dance. But just move your body. You know, like, just do something for two things. One, if we're moving our body, right, we're getting – movement we're getting strength we're getting all of those benefits but we're also coming back into our body and especially if you're doing something because you love it you know like you're doing an activity that you love to do that makes you feel good that makes you whatever then then you're going to get that benefit and coming back and and it lets you just kind of check in and reconnect with your body because I think a lot of times a lot of us aren't connected with our body and so that's the other thing and then and then sleep I'm like do that and the other is human connection Everyone needs human connection. Got so it. those are the basics. That's usually yeah. what I say. That's the first place to start. And then if we're doing that and we're working on that and we still need other supplementation, then let's get that. Let's find that. Like whether that's through therapy or medicine or whatnot. But it's always going to be, we've got to be hitting all of it. We've got to nice. be doing it all. Nice. Right on. Have a balance. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Thanks for jumping on my podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you yeah, having is, me. Yeah, yeah. We pretty, pretty much got into it. Um, I like it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, go and subscribe to this episode, and I'll, I would love to have you back.